just a huge slide. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to ask a lot out of it to get it to slide and the thing just sounds and looks beautiful doesn't it <laughs> you gotta hand it to Indy and they've made such a beautiful beautiful motorcycle here man well guys today is a super special day if you saw yesterday's video you already know what's going on here today is the first ride and impression aboard this 2019 Indian FTR 1200 S. Now, why do I have this bike? You guys already know the deal. This is a giveaway motorcycle. Yes, this is our new intermediate bike giveaway bike. We're super excited about this thing. We've been wanting to do an FTR for a while. It's one of the prettiest bikes we've ever had in the shop. I mean, look at this thing. It is just absolutely gorgeous. Now, in order to get entered to win this bad boy, you got to head over to either yaminumerch.com or ynmoto.co. Get a t-shirt, get a hat, get some gear, get some parts, whatever you want. Use the code FTR. Get yourself 3x entries on every dollar you spend, and you'll be entered to win this bad boy. You can also head over to yaminoob.co and sign up that way, but uh, I know a lot of you just want hats and t-shirts, so we'll get you going like that. So, the Indian FTR. There's a lot to say about this motorcycle, and I think it's important we start with the ethos of what this bike is supposed to be. So, back in 2013, Polaris revitalized the Indian brand, and uh, they started coming out with some new cruisers, the Scout was announced, and all that. But the big thing that Indian did was they went back to flat track racing, and they absolutely dominated with their FTR 750 race bike. Now, if you're familiar with flat track racing, you know that they're long wheelbase bikes, they got big, powerful twin-cylinder engines, no front brakes, very low, aggressive stance motorcycles. And um, this is basically a street version of a flat track bike. Now, it is not a homologated bike. This is not the actual FTR 750. You can go and buy at shops or anything like that. This is a more of a flat track inspired street tracker motorcycle that's designed to just be an absolute ride of a bike to ride around town. So what are we working with here? Well, as you guys can see, this is a steel trellis frame motorcycle. So this is not some cradle frame. This is much more aggressive, much more similar to a Ducati, for example. And we're going to actually come back to Ducati quite a bit in this video because I think the similarities are actually a lot between an older monster and something like this. Um, it features a 1203cc liquid-cooled 60-degree V-twin pumping out about 123 horsepower and 84 foot-pounds of torque. Now, those figures might not sound like a lot if you're looking at stuff like the MT-10 or the Super Dukes where you're like, oh man, Indian could have made something that made 180 horsepower or something like that. But the really big thing about this engine is just how torque rich it is and how fun it is to use. Um, most of the time, motorcycles that make upwards of 150 horsepower are really just for spec sheet warriors. And this motorcycle goes against the grain of a lot of the spec sheet warriors out there. Uh, we're working with fully adjustable suspension. We've got a SAX unit up front, fully adjustable, rebound, compression, preload. Same thing in the back. We've got a mono shock that's preload, rebound, and adjustable as well. Uh, dual disc Brembo's up front, which is really, really cool. We've also got a pretty healthy master cylinder up here. Great braking feel on this thing. You can see it's got the traditional little round reservoir on it as well. Um, and the cool thing about this S model as well is that it comes with this 4.3 inch LCD touchscreen. So very feature rich, very electronically feature rich here. Rider Raid, six axis IMU, a bunch of goodies on this motorcycle that you normally wouldn't see in a, an American styled bike like this. American bikes are known for being lumpy V twins that are just air cooled and kind of silly. But uh, yeah, this bike we actually picked up lightly used, so uh, it's got about 2,000 miles on it. Um, I absolutely fell in love with it when I saw it in person. I saw the the black paint on it. I don't know if you guys can see that in this light. Look at all those look at all those beautiful little flakes on this black paint. It's beautiful. And uh, one of the cool things, you might think, oh, that's a cool gas can, but actually the gas tank is back here on this motorcycle, again, because that flat track inspired styling uh, really lends itself to be a little bit more quirky than, um, you know, your traditional sport naked motorcycles. And uh, as I mentioned, lightly used, about 2,000 miles on it, um, got a full Bassani system on it, which is <laughs> ungodly loud. We're going to get into that as well <laughs> later today in the video. 
And uh, by the way, guys, if you want, check out the chapters in this video below. So if you don't want to see the specs, you just want to see me riding it, or you just want to see the Q&A section at the end, uh, you can definitely do that. Now, the big thing about this 2019 Indian FTR is that it actually has the 1918 setup. So this has a 120, 70, 19 up at the front, if I remember correctly. I'm going to check the tire size. Yep, 120, 70, 19 up at the front. So this is an oversized front wheel. And then out back, we've got a 150, 80, 18 tire. So for the amount of torque this engine produces, it's actually a 70 aspect ratio. It's a 150, 70, 18. Excuse me. <laughs> um, so for the amount of torque this engine produces and the amount of power it can make, um, a 150 rear tire, especially on this kind of Dunlop flat track inspired styling right here, basically makes this thing slide everywhere. Um, I'm very glad it has traction control because I think riders who are not familiar with how a bike feels when you get it to slide and get it to do fun stuff, uh, it, it would scare them a little bit when you ride this thing. Uh, but for a more experienced rider, this bike is a ton of fun. So what do you guys say we flip the key here, uh, get going, because it is getting a little hot here. So let's get this ride started. Also, I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier, but uh, this motorcycle weighs about 518 pounds wet and ready to ride. So a bit heavier than your normal sport nakeds. So flipping the key here on the Indian FTR 1200S, swinging a leg over it. First thing you notice, the ergonomics package is actually very different than you'd expect. The seat is actually quite tall, 33 inches on the uh, seat height on this bad boy, and it is quite a wide seat. So uh, your legs do kind of bow out a little bit. Uh, the pegs are up and nice and aggressive. The handlebars are in a very neutral stance. This is a very similar riding position to something like an MT-10, to something like a Super Duke, but uh, the overall riding experience could not be more different. So as we mentioned, uh, very nice 4.3 inch touchscreen LCD. If we uh, flick this thing to life here, hello, there we go, <laughs> get that 1203cc V-twin churning away, barking to life. Uh, this motorcycle is super loud, so uh, I'm going to give it a couple revs and get the hell out of this office park because people are definitely going to get mad at me, as has already happened to me on this motorcycle. Uh, people have already gotten mad at me about it. Yeah, it's very, very aggressive. So let's get out on the road and let's chat. So if you're coming onto the Indian FTR from, you know, cruisers or more American styled bikes, this thing's gonna feel like the most agile, nimble motorcycle you have ever tried. Um, it's uh, very, very, very different than the traditional motorcycles that uh, Indian will sell you at their dealership. Um, something like this is, like I said, much more similar to a, tra a traditional sport naked bike, but uh, it has a lot of weirdness about it that, in my opinion, separates it quite a bit from the traditional sport naked bike. So as we take off here, that neutral riding stance is so comfortable for the everyday ride on the street. Um, I really, really like the way this thing sits. It's got that aggressive, muscly kind of street tracker vibe to it. My, I, I feel like I want to pitch out my elbows up and just slide this thing around and ride it really, really aggressively, which makes it really fun. It's a rowdy, rowdy motorcycle. That's the first thing you got to know about it. If you flick the wick, basically in first or second gear anywhere, the rear tire will slip. And uh, like I said, it's a great thing that it has traction control because for riders who are less experienced, that could catch them off guard a little bit. The throttle response on this motorcycle is kind of interesting. So this is a full ride-by-wire system on this bike, and um, it just doesn't feel as sharp as a cable-actuated throttle. It does sense like it's thinking a little bit, you know, like it's actually doing a little bit of work for you, kind of in the background. Uh, it doesn't have a great on-off throttle feel, but uh, the previous owner of this motorcycle told me that um, you are actually able to do an ECU flash and actually dial this into a very proper throttle. Uh, it's bizarre that Indian chose to not give it a proper throttle from the factory. You'd think that a high performance street track or flat track or style bike like this, you'd want to make it, you know, proper. So let's get a little acceleration test here as we enter the 360 bridge on Austin. Awesome sound, but it doesn't have a ton in the way 
of Top End Tower. Um, as you guys can tell there, it definitely gets up and goes. This is not a slow bike by any means, but uh, this thing does not have the insane prodigious Top End Tower of a ZH2, of an MT10, of a Super Duke. And for a lot of folks, if you're just looking at the spec sheets, you look at the price point of this thing, you know, 15 grand brand new from the new ones with the 17 inch setup, which we're gonna talk about later. Uh, but this one we picked up for $14,000. And you might think to yourself, that's a lot of money for not much horsepower. But the best thing about this bike is you get it here into, let's say sixth gear, right? I'm in sixth gear here. And uh, I get on the throttle, I get a wave of linear surging torque. And that's really nice, you know? really reminds me of uh, a mid-2000s monster, a Ducati monster, uh, just such a torque-rich V-twin, you know, sport naked experience. It's very, very cool. And the pops and crackles on the D-cells are just so awesome. Now, as I mentioned, this is a bike that you can't really just think about spec sheets when it comes to the riding experience because there's not really any other bike that's trying to be what this bike is, right? Like this is a flat track inspired sport naked bike for the street. Basically every other sport naked bike is either derived from some super bike, kind of like the MT-10. It has an R1 derived frame, which is a homologation race bike uh, for a world super bike and track day toys and stuff like that. Uh, something like the ZH2, it has a steel trellis frame and it's similar-ish to this. Uh, in that it's not based on a race bike, but it's much more of a melt your face off with top end horsepower kind of bike. So that's not really accurate. Um, a Triumph Scrambler is not nearly as zooted up as this thing or aggressive as this thing. And they're kind of designed to be kind of bop around off roady sort of bikes. Um, you have stuff like the CB1000R, kind of similar, right? Like cool neo retro kind of, you know, inspired bike, but again, with an inline four and Honda premiumness and kind of finesse, it's difficult to say that that's a competitor to this bike. So uh, Indians made kind of a one of a kind bike. You don't really like to say that in motorcycling because it sounds kind of cheesy to be like, oh yeah, my bike's a one of a kind, baby. Ain't nobody other bike like it. But you know, riding this thing around, it is a bit of a one-of-a-kind bike. This 19, 18-inch setup uh, makes it feel super unique and weird, um, which is fun. Uh, this bike has a lot of fun, peppy qualities to it that uh, you just don't get from other traditional sport naked motorcycles. Now, the astute among you might be saying, Yami, we know this isn't your first time riding an Indian FTR. We know that you rode Dan Dan the Fireman's Indian FTR back like a year and change ago in Tucson, Arizona, and you didn't like it back then. So what's changed and why do you all of a sudden enjoy the Indian FTR? Well, the thing you gotta realize about when I rode the FTR uh, back in Tucson with Dan Dan is that that was a motorcycle that I was riding on Mount Lemon, which is a beautiful twisty road that goes up a mountain. And for the last three days, I had been on an MT-10. So, you know, when you have all that kind of back of the mouth taste of aggressive cross plane, hyper naked, you jump on the FTR down the same twisty mountain road, you know, all of the strangeness of the FTR becomes much more clear in the light of day. If you ride this thing without that background and without all of that kind of hyper nakedness in your brain, you realize what a fun, special, and beautiful motorcycle that this really is. Um, the thing you gotta know is that this does not handle on the side of the tire like a sport naked motorcycle. Uh, it's quite wallowy, it's very slow to turn in. And once you're on the side of the tire, even at moderate like 5 tenth street pace, the rear wheel starts begging for mercy. Uh, we were doing some flyby shots where I was trying to get into it a little bit more and get a little more aggressive with the Indian FTR. And the rear tire was already just begging for mercy. It was doing that thing where it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. The whole rear end is kind of squatting and shaking and just getting all out of sorts because this is a way overpowered engine for this tire combination which I completely understand why they went with, oh, you know what, we got a little gravel pit here. Let's, let's do some slide action, shall we? Let's 
So let's try to slide it around a little bit in there. Probably have to turn traction control off. <laughs> let's see, we can do a little bit of menu diving right now. Uh, I think you gotta press and hold this, right? Yeah, press and hold that. Pretty intuitive um, menu system on the Indian FTR, I gotta say. It's uh, pretty easy to use. I've definitely used ones that are much more difficult. Looking at you, Aprilia, that's a, that's a crazy menu setting. You know, I, I do not pretend to be a flat track racer, guys, but uh, we can definitely try to do a little bit of something with the Indian FTR here. It's a huge slide. God damn. <laughs> That's actually more torque than I expected. <laughs> yeah, I, I slide around my desert sled a lot. That was aggressive, holy crap. As you can tell, uh, it's, it's a spicy little meatball on some dirt and some gravel. <laughs> You don't have to ask a lot out of it to get it to slide. As you guys could tell, I probably pitched this thing about 45 degrees sideways on that first one because I asked for way too much throttle. <laughs> but that's what it's supposed to do, man. It's supposed to do those crazy big slides, which is a lot of fun. But, you know, the average street rider does not spend any amount of time sideways on a motorcycle. Uh, as we mentioned, the FTR 750 race bike doesn't even have front brakes, right? Like, that's how crazy it is. And uh, it actually takes a considerable amount of skill and testicular fortitude to uh, ride a motorcycle around an oval with no front brakes and just completely pitching it sideways. Um, yeah, that's pretty crazy. But uh, as you guys can tell, basically no rear grip in any situation, honestly. Uh, you have functional rear grip on this motorcycle when you're going down the road. But if you get into any kind of gravel or any kind of slippery situation, be very judicious with your throttle hand because it does tend to, you know, pitch around quite a bit. Um, I really want to get this thing on a pit of gravel that's not right next to a major road and actually has some room that you can play around with it because it does do massive slides. Uh, it's very, very good at that. But as I was saying, that's probably a big reason why for 2022 model year, Indian just said, you know what, just put 17s and sport rubber on the thing because that's what most people are trying to do with the bike. But I personally feel that that's what eliminates the charm of this motorcycle. The charm of this bike is that it is so peculiar on the side of the tire. It is a bit of a handful to ride around town and it is a bit of a fight to uh, actually muscle it down a twisty road. Um, it's a pretty intense riding experience uh, because of how aggressive the engine is versus the tire combination. And the thing just sounds and looks beautiful, doesn't it? <laughs> you gotta hand it to Indy and they've made such a beautiful, beautiful motorcycle here, man. thing what an angry bike a lot of american riders want something to compete in the sport naked or even the super sport segment that is from an american brand and the indian ftr is about as close as we've got right now this motorcycle on this platform is the closest thing that americans have to a proper sport naked experience um which is a bit of a bummer because you know i personally think that it was really cool that this motorcycle came with the flat track wheels and tires. Uh, I think putting 17s on it just makes it feel like an outdated mid-2000s liquid-cooled Ducati. Um, the charm and the interest of this bike to me is that it has a crazy tire combination and that it doesn't work particularly well. Because it feels like an old-school muscle car, you know? It feels like an old school hopped up Chevelle or something like that, where you're just like, man, this should not have, you know, 550 horsepower and a supercharger slapped onto it. Uh, that's how this thing feels. You're like, why the hell did they put something with 123 horsepower on 150s at the rear? That doesn't make any sense at all. So as we'll demonstrate here, the Indian FTR is not a, sharp corner carving machine. 
You can do it with it, for sure you can, but you have got to have your wits about you. This is not a bike that will uh, coddle you, especially if you have traction control off and sport mode on and all that kind of stuff. This is a bike you really gotta be on your A game to ride, because it's a crazy riding experience, honestly. Um, and after riding it for a little bit, I started to ask myself, I was like, did we do a, a right thing by putting this in the intermediate bike giveaway? Because the way this thing is set up, um, I would prefer to see someone with a little bit more experience riding this thing, but it is a motorcycle that a lot of people will probably step up to for their second or their third, um, just given the spec sheet numbers, right? They see 1200 CC, they see that it's a, you know, a 120-ish horsepower motorcycle. And, um, you know, they're probably gonna think that it's appropriate for a second bike. I don't really think this is a super appropriate second motorcycle, given its price point, given its torque. Um, this is intermediate plus, I would say. <laughs> Definitely an intermediate plus kind of motorcycle, but it can be done. If you're a more responsible, older guy, it can definitely be done. Older guy or girl, I should say. And that's, I've seen the common demographic for these motorcycles is, uh, you know, your mid thirties, maybe two or three promotions into their career, has a house, you know, wants a, a beautiful, you know, cool motorcycle that they can show off to their friends, talk about the flat track inspired styling. Um, this bike does a great job of that. Uh, it's very, very cool for that reason. And I just, I mean, just looking at this thing, we were taking photos of it and videos of it the other day for the reveal. And it's just, very difficult to even get a bad angle on this motorcycle. It's so achingly pretty, so achingly perfect, you know? So I'm gonna to attempt to show you guys what I mean right here by how first gear is basically just useless. Um, you just go right here, just get on first. You just leave black strips everywhere. It's absolutely crazy. With this full pipe on here, this thing sounds like a flat track racer. It's so awesome. Very unique sound out of this thing. Um, very unique sound from this 1203cc V-Twin. It's really not like any other bike that I've ridden. The Scout was similar, but this thing's even more hopped up than the Scout, so that makes it fun. that street tracker energy man this thing's a total hooligan bike <laughs> absolute riot proper quick too I, I really don't think that people should look at this and think this is a slow motorcycle it is not a slow motorcycle uh, you can get yourself in a lot of trouble with this thing if you're not careful again I would really like to see someone in that little bit more of an intermediate plus situation with it I think one of the things the Indian really has going for it as well is that it has such a premium fit and finish to it. As I mentioned, that's what makes me think of Ducati whenever I think of Indian FTR is because I'm on a liquid cooled V-twin with uh, a ton of, you know, torque and power. And uh, I've also got this screen in front of me. I've got Saks fully adjustable suspension. Um, this absolutely feels like a $14,000 motorcycle. This doesn't feel like, uh, I don't know, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna talk crap about Harley again, but there's a lot of Harleys you ride and you're like, this thing's really like 15, 16, 18 grand, really? But this thing with the screen and the fully adjustable suspension and the way it makes its power and the way it looks and just the, the general ethos of it, uh, yeah, this is a $14,000 bike, no doubt about it in my mind. I feel like a million bucks when I'm on this thing. I feel great. And I feel like it's such a, like, classic badass vibe for a motorcycle. That aggressive, high handlebar, low gas tank. You know, it's it looks just absolutely menacing standing still. But also beautiful at the same time. It's uh, kind of crazy, you know? One thing that I think people who are coming from cruisers and want to try something like the Indian FTR um, will appreciate is that you can still cruise with this motorcycle. You don't have to ride it like a ham-fisted moron to have fun with it. Uh, I'm, I'm going here maybe 10% throttle, third gear, just vibing, cruising down this little bridge here, enjoying this dappled light, you know, having everything looking so peaceful and beautiful on this little 
little uh, body of water right here, you know. Um, this is uh, a, a bike you definitely can cruise with, and I think with a less aggressive exhaust than this one, uh, you absolutely can take this motorcycle and ride it chill. It's not something like the ZH2 or the MT10, where it's kind of like, if you don't ride it crazy, it's almost like, what the hell is the point of this motorcycle, you know? This is a bike you can definitely just enjoy the torque, enjoy the uh, overall sensation of just being on a beautiful premium machine like this. And then whenever you want, just get yourself some torque, baby. Grass fed. <laughs> It's a very cool bike. I'm really, really digging this thing. Uh, so now we're gonna get it out in the city for a little bit, just see how its urban slow speed manners are. And then we're gonna get it back in the shop, take a look at the TFT or the LCD rather, take a look at some of that stuff, the electronics package, wrap it up with the Q&A and finish out this video. So I'll see you guys in the city. Alrighty guys, testing the Indian FTR's urban manners here. And uh, the thing you got to know about this bike when it comes to slow speed, urban riding, urban carving kind of riding, um, is that the ergonomics package is just so agreeable, you know? That's why these more upright bikes have been selling so well in the last six years or so, is that people don't really want to be all hunched over when they're just cruising around their local city, you know? It helps to have an ergonomics package that is comfortable and agreeable. And uh, we can check here the suspension of the Indian FTR. How does it handle some bumps? Uh, yeah, not too bad, I gotta say. Uh, it helps having a pretty upmarket, fully adjustable piece of kit on here. It uh, will help you cope with the bumps and lumps of an urban environment a lot better than you normally would if you had some tiny spindly front fork like uh, a Jixxer 250 or something. <laughs> But uh, yeah, with such a torque-rich engine, upright ergos, this thing's a ton of fun to rip around a city, I gotta say. Uh, you know, in slower speeds, side to side, you still feel that kind of wallowy feeling that it has. It's not as nimble as uh, a traditional sport naked because it's not on a traditional sport naked front tire. Uh, it doesn't have like a very sharp V-shaped 120-70-17. It's a bigger wheel with a flatter tire profile. So you do get that sense of kind of like it doesn't really love turning in as much as a normal sport bike would. But uh, all is forgiven because of how cool it looks, right? <laughs> We're such vain creatures as motorcyclists that uh, you get on a bike that just looks this cool and you don't really care about anything, I gotta say. Uh, one big thing about this bike as well is that it does get a little toasty, being that it's a hopped up V-twin, you know, uh, 12 to 5, excuse me, 12.5 to 1 compression ratio on this bad boy. Uh, sitting at a light with the pipes right here next to your foot, this is a bit of a hot bike in, in more ways than one. It does get a little bit toasty when you're just trying to get to the next uh, stoplight but it's a lot of fun to rip through the throttle, uh, stoplight to stoplight. Just being a total goon, you know? <laughs> That's what it's all about, I suppose. We do need to get a baffle on this exhaust, though. It's, it's absolutely just way too loud. It's so ridiculous. You know, the foot pegs are in a very comfortable position on this motorcycle as well, despite them being uh, basically in a sport bike position. This is like a very high foot peg, uh, leaned back, you know, or rather like pushed back. I feel like my, my heels are getting close to my butt on this thing for sure. Uh, but, you know, despite that, a pretty agreeable place to, to sit for a morning commute or something like that, really not too shabby at all. Um, and again, with all this torque, it's so much fun to rip through this thing through uh, your local city. I don't really feel like doing that here in this particular situation because this bike is so ungodly loud. Uh, it's not, I just feel like I'm a bit of a nuisance, you know? <laughs> it feels like I am actively annoying people uh, by behaving in such a way. And I don't really want to annoy anybody on my motorcycle. I just want to have fun on my bike. I've never been a super big fan of extremely loud pipes. But maybe for the, the Harley guys at home who are looking at this, you want those loud pops to save lives, brother. And I guess this bike does deliver on that front. 
it's so fun to pitch your elbows up a little bit, get a little bit more forward on the bike and just, you know, kind of look a little bit more aggressive on it because um, it does have that flat track inspired styling. It's very, very cool. Uh, but that's going to wrap up the city section for now. I think you guys can definitely see that this is a comfortable, uh, fun motorcycle to ride around a dense urban setting. We're now going to get it back to the shop, take a look at the screen, the TFT, some of the other stuff. <laughs> Come on. Okay. Wake up. Get this bike back to the shop. Get the uh, TFT taken a look at, and uh, we'll see you there. All right, guys, diving through the menu here a little bit on the Indian FTR. We're not going to get super in the weeds with this motorcycle. Uh, but as you can see here, this 4.3 inch LCD touchscreen display, pretty cool stuff here mostly controlled by this gauge cluster right here. You've got the cruise control setting right there, very easy to use, turn it on, set it down to set. Uh, this is your main button right over here for uh, accessing the menus. Uh, this is your turn indicators and your horn here. The Indian actually has a very deep horn, if you guys listen. It's like a old awooga horn, it's kind of funny. Uh, so I've got it set up in this mode right here. I like this, uh, this gauge cluster mode because it allows me to see my speed, my gear, my revs a lot more clearly than the other mode, which is this one right here. Uh, this mode I just find a little bit more difficult to, to see what I need to see, although it does provide a little bit more information. Uh, I like this mode because it gives me a very clear readout of my gas here, my revs, and my speed. As you can tell, that touch screen is working right there. If we look inside the menu here, uh, you can do this like kind of quick access menu right here and uh, you can see, you can set up your gauges, you can put it in different modes, you can decrease the brightness, which I don't know why you'd wanna do that, I'd want the max brightness available. You can go back here, you can set up your phone with this thing, do like a Bluetooth situation, do music and all that, but this is the setting that I really like to look at. So you've got three different modes right here, you've got rain, standard, and sport mode. Um, that's going to allow you to change the engine map a little bit on this bike. You can put it in track mode, which I'm sure livens things up a little bit as we were testing. Once you activate track mode here, you can just go right over here, turn off your traction control, very easy. Uh, it disables ABS and disables TC, means you can do whatever you want with the bike. Uh, that might be good or might be bad, depending on where you're coming from. Uh, but if you turn off traction control here, or track mode, uh, you get the traction back on and it's good to go. Uh, you can actually go through here and if you click in settings, you can see all kinds of cool information about the bike too. If I change the ISO here a little bit, uh, you guys can actually see that. So we can see here, uh, you got the VIN and everything, the odometer, everything else. Uh, you can cycle through here, hit the settings right there, change all your stuff. You can change the time and everything else. See bike information, it tells you the oil life and all that. So some pretty cool features on this bike from a technological perspective. And as I mentioned, six axis IMU, lots of goodies on this motorcycle. Um, so this TFT here works pretty, pretty well. Uh, I, it's one of my favorites that I've used so far. It's definitely better than the Aprilia's, uh, the RS660s that we gave away. It's just a little bit more clear and easy to use. Uh, but with that, let's talk about the Q&A section, get some questions and answers from our Discord boys and wrap this video up. Alrighty guys, now that we've done a pretty comprehensive look on the Indian FTR 1200S here, it's time to answer some questions on Discord. If you want the chance to ask me questions, just hang out with us. Go to yamanoob.co, become a member, and you can hang out with me and ask me any kind of questions you want. So today, we've got a Q&A on the Indian FTR, so let's get started. X asks, would you ever actually flat track this motorcycle? For fun, of course. Um, I'd probably give it a shot. Uh, I don't know if flat tracker days have like just like track days like normal road racing courses, but if there was ever an oval and they'd let me try it, uh, I might, but it is so pretty, I would really hate to bin it and drop it. Captain Destructo asks, how does it compare to the upgraded Sportster? How about the Softail or Dyna? So I have not ridden the updated Sportster yet, but I have ridden a Softail and a Dyna and uh, this thing is completely different and completely hopped up and better in basically every single way over those motorcycles, in my opinion. Crimson Conflict asks, what changes would you make to the bike to make it the best FTR ever, all caps? Um, I don't really know if I would make any changes to it as it sits right now. It's just about perfect for the type of bike that it is, in my opinion. This is a motorcycle that, again, is designed to be a flat tracker, street tracker, aggressive, sport bike for the street type of thing. 
and uh, it's a ton of fun to ride. So I don't really think I would change anything on it, which is saying a lot. Lambs Boy asks, how does it compare to a normal FTR? Is it better seeing that you've ridden one before? So again, this is the same spec and model of the FTR that I rode back in Tucson with Dan Dan. This has the 19 and the 18 inch setup and I have not ridden the 17 inch FTR setup. But again, as I mentioned in the vlog, I think the 17s would detract from some of the goofy flat tracker character that this bike has and just make it more of a kind of milk toast uh, good enough, you know, mid-2000s Ducati, basically. Uh, Jaded asks, how does it compare to the Meteor 350? Bit of a, a meme post there. Uh, not much in common with the Meteor 350. Ninjas Please asks, do you think the bike is set up well to be the one bike to own that can do a bit of everything, including two-up riding? If not, where does it fall short? Um, it can be a bike that you could own and kind of do anything you want with. Um, it's not as flexible as something like an MT-07 where like you could literally get that bike and do anything you'd want with it. This is much more of a street bike, a fun street tracker kind of experience. You can definitely go two up on this thing. It's got plenty of torque and heft to it that it's not going to feel bizarre or peculiar going two up. Um, so it's a bike that could definitely be an everyday, anything you'd want to do kind of bike, but you'd have to temper your expectations just a little bit with it. Squeever Balls asks, is it as heavy as it looks? And that's the one thing that's kind of surprising about the Indian FTR here, is that it actually behaves much more like a 450, 460 pound motorcycle as opposed to a 520 pound motorcycle. It carries its weight quite well, and I suspect that's down to the fact that the gas tank is behind you and quite low on the motorcycle. Uh, the thing you notice most is the longer wheelbase and how long the overall bike is. That's probably the thing that you notice most as opposed to the weight. So initial flick in and kind of turn in on the motorcycle is a little bit slower than you'd expect from a sport naked, but still carries its weight quite well for what it is. Noobmaster69 asks, how does it feel when it's leaned over and is the throttle lurchy or twitchy? So when this thing's actually at lean, um, it, it can definitely lean over and it can be a fun side to side bike. But again, you gotta ride it like it wants to be ridden. You cannot ride this thing expecting it to be a fully committed, dedicated sport bike, because when it is on the side of the tire, as I mentioned in the vlog, at even a five or six tenths kind of pace, you already start getting tire slip, you already start to get kind of th this feeling. The, the bike, it, it's like the front end and the rear end are doing two different things at one time. Um, you know, for me, coming out of corner exit in third gear, if you pin it, you, you, get, you get this motion out of the bike, um, and that's definitely down to the fact that these tires are just not designed to approach even a spirited street pace, in my opinion. But it's still very fun to ride, even in those kind of conditions, because it gives you so much feedback and is so kind of crazy. Um, the throttle is a little bit, it's its not quite there. Um, I, I have a hard time explaining why that is, but the ride-by-wire system, you know, once, once you've opened the throttle and you're using it, it's definitely pretty good but the problem becomes when you have to actually go on-off. On-off is a little bizarre on this bike. Like a lot of computer-controlled throttles, the on-off throttle just is not super great, um, but I am told that an ECU flash can, can fix the throttle issue, so that would be pretty cool. Owl Citizen asks, how much does the engine feel like a 1200cc? It feels like a 1200cc engine. It's got ample torque throughout the whole rev range. It's a ton of fun to be in any gear and lightly just kind of roll on a throttle and feel that wave of torque. That's why you want a motorcycle with a big engine because it feels like it has a lot of torque. Uh, Drift and Fish asks, if you could only own one motorcycle, is this a contender? For me personally, and the kind of riding I like to do, this would not be a motorcycle that I would only own as my only bike. I like my riding to be a little bit more diverse and varied. So if I only had to have one bike, I would probably do like a 650 naked, like an MT-07 just because I know that I could do a lot of different stuff with that motorcycle, whereas this is, is pretty pigeonholed in its kind of stoplight to stoplight street tracker kind of vibe. Uh, Poke Hacker asks, do you think it's going to be in any competition with the new HD Sportster S when fitted with mid controls? And I really don't. Um, this motorcycle feels much more closer to a Sport Naked than the Sportster S is going to feel. However, both bikes are probably going to have a similar wonky on the side of the tire kind of feel 
the Sportster S is actually equipped with actual sport rubber-ish. I mean, it has a 160 at the front, so that's not going to do you any favors. But I think both bikes are going to be fun sport bike experiences-ish but hampered by different reasons, right? It's like America can't just make a good standard sport naked. They have to make a sport naked that is bizarre for one reason or another. American exceptionalism, right? Something like that. Uh, Crime Dog asks, is it comparable to other 1000cc naked bikes or more in line with intermediate bikes that the MT-09 Street Triple or Duke 890? Um, again, as I mentioned in the vlog, it is so hard to compare this bike to either an MT-10 or a ZH2 or even a Duke 890 or an MT-09, it feels completely different than both of those categories of bikes. This thing sits in a very peculiar little niche all by itself. Um, and I think that's really cool. I, I think in the, in the day and age of motorcycles being so segmented, it's pretty awesome that the Indian FTR has found a very small little sliver to carve itself into. That's pretty cool. Bloater asks, why would you pick the FTR over something like an MT-09 given the price gap? Well, it just, number one, is much more refined and special feeling and premium than an MT-09. An MT-09 feels a little plasticky and cheap. Um, number two, the experience it provides you is very different from an MT-09. I've got a lot of experience with the MT-09 platform. I used to own an FC-09. We have done a giveaway MT-09, and I've ridden Whitney's XSR900 a bunch. I'm very familiar with the uh, 847cc platform that Yamaha has made in the MT-09, and this thing is it's, it's completely different than an MT-09. It's much more of a aggressive street tracker, almost cruisery kind of bike, whereas the MT-09 is just like a manic hyper naked, triple, wheelie happy machine. This thing needs a little bit of coaxing to do wheelies. It actually likes to slide a lot more than it likes to pitch the front wheel. Although many of the press photos have shown me that it is clearly possible to wheelie this thing. I have not figured out how to do it and I don't know if I ever will because I'm not that great at wheelies. But uh, yeah, it's just a different experience. Um, someone shopping for this in that 15 to $16,000 price point is not really going to care about an MT-09 because it's not going to fit the vibe that they're trying to fit. Midlife Duck asks, with the 33-inch seat height for the FTR, does it make it a little bit difficult for people who are vertically challenged? Also, it looks like a, hike, a naked or hyper-naked. Why is it so heavy at 530 pounds approximately? So yeah, the seat height is a little bit tall and a little unapproachable for a lot of folks. Um, and that's actually something I noticed on the bike. And because the seat is actually quite wide, it's a little difficult to get your legs down and to actually pitch it over. Um, so that's actually something that's a little bit tougher on this bike. Um, but, you know, being the weight that you were asking about, that 530 pounds, uh, I think it's because it's a steel trellis frame that is a little bit heavier than uh, a twin spar frame or something like that. It is a big lump of an engine too, 1200 cc's, so that does add to the weight as well. Um, but I don't really think the weight is a super big detractor on this motorcycle. Stardust Camellia asks, how lively does the FTR feel? Is it something that feels good to wind out or is it more traditional cruiser? Um, it feels great to really wind it out and wring its neck. This thing definitely wants to rev and party. Um, and as I mentioned in the vlog, it is incredibly lively on the side of the tire. It's a bit bonkers and crazy. Um, and I really, really like riding it. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, it's very, very lively to ride. Uh, Wyatt asks, why do you like this one more than Dan Dan's? Well, this one has a full system, which makes it better and I'm not riding it on a very twisty, fun mountain road. This motorcycle is not really designed to carve up canyons or mountain roads, and so I think I tested Dan Dan's in the wrong environment and with the wrong preconceived notions from the MT-10 I was riding at the time, so this is actually a lot of fun. Uh, Seven Round Burst asks, exhaust notes never sound right on videos. How is it in real life? It's extremely loud. I want to put a baffle on this motorcycle, but um, the exhaust sound itself is very, very good. I like it a lot. It's so angry and muscly. Uh, get Baked AF420, great username. Uh, would you consider it a muscle cruiser or more of a naked bike? It's more of a naked bike. It is much more of a sport naked experience than a muscle cruiser or a, or a sport cruiser type of thing. Um, this thing gives me much more of a kind of uh, MT-09, MT-10 feeling when I ride it than a Rocket 3 or something like that. So there you go. Uh, G. Schmitty asks, is it too bold to say that the FTR will become a legendary bike? Um, perhaps, a, I don't really know what qualifies a legendary motorcycle, but it's a very unique motorcycle and a very different motorcycle that comes from a very different place than most bikes do. 
Like I said, most bikes come from like race bikes or street bikes. I mean, this came from a flat track inspired background, which is very particular and unique uh, for the demands of that type of racing. So pretty cool. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up the question and answer portion of this video. I hope you enjoyed our first look at the Indian FTR 1200S. We're going to be making a lot more videos with this thing, so definitely stick around and stay tuned for all the cool content we've got coming out on this motorcycle. Remember, it is a giveaway motorcycle, so be sure you check out the links below and see how you can enter to win this bad boy. Code FTR is going to give you 3x entries and 10% off on YNMoto and YammyNoobMerch.com. We'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Now how you doing partner? This video is over, but you click on this one right over here and you keep watching yourself some yammy new. Maybe I bend my boots on this one, maybe I give you some other funny memes or something like that. You might not know if you watch the video, so watch the video now, alright?